This story is both tragic and unsettling. A Texas morgue employee, George Lowell, was accidentally cremated while napping at work. Port Arthur was accidentally cremated while taking a nap. Witnesses say he was inserted into the flame-based cremator in the middle of the night. This particular Jefferson County morgue uh, processes all the unclaimed bodies that turn up across the county. If nobody wants to pay for a private funeral home to dispose of the body, then they end up at the county morgue. This was a particularly busy night and there were many bodies that were being processed, one after the other. Now, bodies that needed clothing that are at this county morgue end up getting outfitted with state-issued scrubs, apparently, which look just like the ones that are worn by the employees. In other words, this was actually like an accident waiting to happen, but I can't blame anybody for not predicting it. The crew didn't realize their mistake until the next morning when they were auditing the remains they had one extra and one less employee and so then they started working backwards the jefferson county coroner was later able to id lowell from what little there was left of his remains lowell was apparently called to work late the previous evening friends who knew him said that he struggled with insomnia and was taking a popular drug called Ambien so we speculate that he took the Ambien with the intention of going to bed but was interrupted before he could reach the bed by a phone call from work saying hey we got a ton of bodies here we need you to come in right now and for some reason he agreed thinking he could manage to stay awake but he couldn't so I don't know if you guys know Ambien like how harsh that is it's a crazy drug when it comes to side effects in fact if you have problems with sleeping most doctors won't even prescribe it i mean it has to be so severe because you become almost comatose like you're not coming out of that i, I don't know if you guys know like how deep the sleep is when you're talking about like benzos like xanax well this is even worse so that would explain why he didn't wake up when they grabbed the gurney and they slid him into the cremator or whatever you know, obviously there'll be some motion, but I'm telling you, if you're on on ambient, you're not waking up. Another thing people say, well, why they didn't scream when it was turned on? Well, the inside of a cremator is made of concrete, fire brick, and steel, and it is sealed because those temperatures rise high enough to turn bone and teeth into dust. So it's not something, once that thing is sealed, you're not going to hear someone scream. And we can only speculate how long it would take for him to wake up if he woke up at all during the time but experts say apparently that it would be seconds you know less than a minute and and it would be kaput i can only imagine waking up in that situation in the state of absolute terror and pain it's maddening to think about if you wanted to fake your death this would be a great way right you put your wallet and your wedding ring or some other stuff onto a corpse and then you just bounce out of there. Then once they cremate it, they're like, oh my God, you know what I mean? But <laughs> I guess this in this particular situation, they had cameras. So they were also able to review footage and see the incident later. So it's pretty damning. This incident raises numerous questions. How could someone sleeping be mistaken for a cadaver? And why take a drug that causes such deep sedation, potentially leading to this kind of mix-up? It's tragic, bizarre, and deeply unsettling. This is wild. In France, they have successfully trained crows to help clean up their parks by picking up the littered cigarette butts. The way that it works is a simple rewards program. They've trained the crows to find the discarded and littered cigarette butts, pick them up, and fly them to a specific trash can where once they drop the butts in, a reward for the crow is dispensed, usually nuts or seeds. These crows work four days a week and have been doing so since 2018, which makes this project pretty successful. By employing crows, you can help reduce the manual cleanup costs and pollution. This is being done in Sweden as well right now, and they believe that if they did it on a larger scale, they could reduce manual cleanup costs by 75%. Crows are the perfect bird for the job because they're highly intelligent and they have amazing memory and are often compared more to dolphins. Not only that, but they have facial recognition, which allows them to memorize human faces for years and years on end. So if you're in France or Sweden and you are a big litterer of cigarette butts, I would probably stop right now because the whole crow workforce probably knows who you are. In the, the use of crows to clean up cigarette butts highlights their intelligence and adaptability. If this approach can be scaled up, it might offer a meaningful solution to managing litter and reducing pollution. These smart people figure ways to integrate the natural world into our efforts to maintain a cleaner environment. This footage is captivating. Some people think it's a UFO abducting someone, 
but it actually looks like a person being lifted through a tornado into a bright light. I'm abducting a human? That's not what I've seen. We're about to break it down because it gets crazy, but you can see the person literally going up what appears to be a tornado. Yeah, that should be hitting you in your brain right now. In a tornado. Look at this. Somebody going up through a funnel of wind, a tornado, into what appears a great light. And I know there's many people with a hardened heart who refuse to believe that these things are real, but they're very real and it's not AI. Now this right here is going to absolutely blow your mind. Who do you know who has used a whirlwind, a vortex of wind? God? In the Bible? Look at this great light. I wonder what that is. Do you remember when Elijah was caught up to heaven by the whirlwind? Do you remember? He's not the only person who encountered a whirlwind. In the book of Job, when NASA's test of slamming a spacecraft into an asteroid has unexpectedly created what might be the first human-made meteor shower, potentially lasting a century. Spacecraft into an asteroid, it was a test to show whether an impact, whether an impact rather, could redirect a meteor if it posed a threat to Earth. Now, scientists While the meteors are expected to be harmless, this experiment is like something straight out of an Armageddon plot, showing just how close science and fiction can get. Our ability to influence cosmic events may be the end of us. Let's delve into a video shared by prestigious Bad 1998 on the Paranormal Encounters subreddit. This video has stirred up a lot of discussion in the community. Normally, prestigious Bad 1998's motion sensor captures white orbs, but this recording is described as quite different. The footage shows something intriguing. A dark orb moving down the stairs. As the seconds tick by, the shape morphs into something that eerily resembles a human form. The atmosphere in the video is enough to raise goosebumps on anyone who watches it. Now, the question arises. Could this mysterious figure be a paranormal entity roaming the homeowner's dwelling? The answer eludes us, shrouded in mystery. What do you think this shadowy figure could be? Is there a rational explanation behind it? One thing's for sure, we all hope that the homeowner finds peace and can resume their normal life without the unsettling presence captured in the video. Y'all, the oceans and the waterways are acting up big time. Like, this is end time stuff. So do y'all want to still tell me in the comments that everything's normal that I'm reaching? It's been like this for decades and ever since you can remember, there's like millions of dead fish in Greece. They're using machinery to pull them all out. They're saying that's because climate change. We're gonna get into that in one second because we literally just had a warning issued about this thing. But this has been happening for months. Like, if we're watching the same footage right now and you're still trying to claim that everything is normal, you're a liar. This is intense. The situation with massive fish die, offs in Greece, increased dolphin attacks in Japan, and widespread climate alerts paints a troubling picture of environmental stress. If these events are happening on such a scale, it's a stark reminder of how critical it is to address climate change. Whether or not you believe in apocalyptic scenarios, the evidence suggests that serious issues are unfolding right now. In a meeting between the President of the People's Republic of China, Xi Jinping, and Russia's Vladimir Putin, something caught the attention of viewers. In the footage captured by the news media, the two leaders walked past two security guards, one guard on the right, turned his head in an unusual way as Putin passed by, leading some to describe his movements as robotic or alien. Take another look at the clip and share your thoughts. What could explain the strange behavior of the guard?
This is absolutely shocking. A Wells Fargo employee died at her desk and it took four days for anyone to notice. Authorities say that 60-year-old Denise Prudhomme entered her Wells Fargo office building in Arizona at 7 a.m. Friday, August 16th. One of the employees at the business, who asked to remain anonymous in fear of their job, spoke to 12 News and said that multiple people working on those days complained of a foul odor, but just assumed that it was due to plumbing problems. She added that the reason they even discovered her when they did was that her boss emailed her and when she didn't reply, one of her colleagues was told to go check her cubicle where she normally sits. And that's when they made that horrifying discovery. The anonymous employee said that the building has 24 hour security and that she should have been found sooner. This is absolutely chilling. Imagine passing away at your desk, surrounded by people, and no one noticing for four days. It makes you wonder, how disconnected have we become in our work environments that a colleague could be sitting there, lifeless, while others simply go about their routines? The fact that people even noticed a foul odor and brushed it off as plumbing issues makes it even more unsettling. And it wasn't until an email went unanswered that someone finally checked her cubicle. It's haunting to think that in a space with 24-hour security, she still went unnoticed for so long.